Well, my name is Ben Petrie, and if you've been watching my channel, you've seen a number of short videos that I've made answering questions that people ask about living in Mexico. And now I've begun a newer series of longer pieces um, where I interview people who talk about their stories and how they came to be here in San Miguel and share other information that you might find of interest. So today I have Carol Hammond, who is um, an unusual really in my experience because she is a native of Buffalo, New York, and I've never met anyone else in San Miguel who is other than her husband. Um, and uh, we do exist. There's more of us. Well, all right. Well, I believe you. I believe you. I'm just sharing my own okay. experience. But um, at any rate, tell us how you come to be here. No, that's well, it was it convoluted. But my husband. It was my husband's idea. Yes, and why did he? My make husband that idea? is an attorney, or was is now retired as an attorney. But he had got grown very tired of his job, and uh, and when he was about 45. He announced that he wanted to retire at age 50. And I said, well, gee, dear, how are we going to do, manage that financially? That sounds complicated. And he said, well, I have a friend whose parents moved to Mexico. And uh, they're, they're quite comfortable. And they say it's very reasonable to live here. And uh, we should look at it. And I said, sure, we can look at it. And so we started to research where would be a good place to live. And uh, there were a number of books Available, and there's probably a lot more now. Sure. Um, because this was uh, about 14 years ago, 15 years ago. No, longer than that. 20. And uh, he, uh, so we, we started to visit Mexico and, and visit different towns that a lot of Americans lived in. And where did you visit? We went to Guadalajara, which is a little too big for me. Okay, that's it's a little too big. It's a, it's a nice place, but it's a little too big for me. And we went to uh, Hajik in Lake Chapala because there are a lot of Americans. Yeah, it's even more than here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't really, that, those two places didn't, the three places didn't really appeal to me for various reasons, mostly a lack of culture. Yes. I, I was looking for a place that provided me with a lot of entertainment. I like theater, uh, I like concert, music concerts, and things like that. Opera, and I, I was looking for a place that had all that. And when I landed in San Miguel, I discovered that it, it was perfect. The, the beautiful architecture, um, the surroundings, the weather, and uh, all this culture. A million different places to see theater and, and uh, great restaurants. I mean, there was just and did you know right away? I mean, you were yeah, there I three actually days did. I something. was here a couple, of, you know, a couple of days, and already started to look at real estate, which sounded a little outrageous. I didn't buy it on that first visit, but I, I looked uh, and, and really seriously looked. And so a year later, I came back, and the plan was to uh, look at real estate and decide whether it was a place I'd want to live. I, so I planned it visit for a whole month and really soak everything in. And what happened is I looked at uh, real estate the first week and bought a house <laughs> without much thought. And and then went home and, and thought, well, how am I, how are we going to do all this? You know, get our lives in order to be able to move here. And it took us about a year, what we did. We, uh, my husband had to sell his practice and I had to retire from my teaching job. But, uh, it, it all went so simply and easily that I decided it was meant to be. How oh, great. Yeah. So how did you choose your house? Um, we met a real estate agent at Tom's Rotary meeting. Yes. He's a Rotarian. And he took us, we told him what our price range was, and he took us to, to uh, various places that he thought would fit the bill. And one of them worked out perfectly. And you just walked we, in and loved the house. We walked in and liked the house for a number of reasons. It has a lot of garden space and things like that, and enough light that I really appreciate. And so uh, we put in an offer, but I think we really thought, oh, they'll never accept our offer. We were a little lower than they were asking, and thought, oh, they'll never expect it. It'll just be a polite response. 
But they did. They did accept our offer right away. And As if it, it was. We had a house. Yes. And we had to make it work. But it was, it, it's actually been a pretty simple transition. Yeah. So now, uh, Tony, I know, is a big wheel in Rotary, and you've helped out quite a lot with your famous German potato salad. Um, so, so Tony's met a lot of people through the Rotary connection. Well, that's that's a great way to meet people to start with, is to join the organizations. I, I, I volunteer at Elmo, the nursing home there. Yes. And I have a lot of friends out of that. I have experiences from the journey. And, and I get the sense that an awful lot of people make their friends through volunteering efforts in different areas. There are so many uh, NGOs in, in uh, San Miguel that are mostly run by Americans. There's so many op different opportunities to uh, volunteer. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And, and it gives you something to do, something valuable to do where you're actually contributing to Sure. And so that's a good, I mean, if you were somebody in the States and thinking, well, how, if I, I like San Miguel, everything I've seen about the climate and the culture and the cost and all of that is pretty wonderful, but you would suggest to them that choosing a volunteer opportunity well, or two. It, I find the only people that have trouble moving here are people who are very um, job driven. Okay. You know, there are executives and companies, and, and then when they retire, they find not enough to do. Yeah. But volunteerism eliminates all those jobs. You can keep busy every day if you want to. Yes, so that's pretty great. And, and all of these organizations do wonderful things that really help people. I mean, I know Rotary is involved with this. Um, water water catchment systems. Yes, and and the, and their their composting toilets. Composting toilets. Where they also have um, you know provided ambulances uh, for the uh, Red Cross, and they've uh, paid for a fire truck for the bomberos, the firefighters. I mean, they have a lot of different projects. They paid for um, uh, some machine that they set up at the hospital in Iran that checks for glaucoma. Oh, it's very quite good. Quite prevalent here. So they, they actually contribute in a million different ways to uh, the community. So I know with the, uh, the composting toilet that in the country uh, where most people don't have indoor toilets, right. that people just really go out into the fields and that the women in particular are extremely uncomfortable right. in doing that during the day and that that affected, um, you know, how... They, they were, they were not urinating. Anymore. Yes, and then that, <laughs> that affected their not wanting to drink uh, because yeah. of that, mm -hmm. and so on. And so now there's this sort of double composting toilet, and you use one side of it, and I, I guess it separates the urine out in some. I'm not familiar with the, you, you have not, the mechanism. You've no, not I, gone and done I haven't it. used it. Uh, I think it separates out the. <laughs> I think it separates out the urine, mm -hmm. and it it composts, and then when it fills you close that side and you go to the other oh, side okay. and then by the time the other side has filled the first side is now soil and so you can take it and use, use it. it for fertilizer yes and since much of the soil in this area is only a, a, a level or two above sand it really adds a great deal to people in their gardens and their fields sure. and so forth and so there really is, uh, and I know you, now you're collecting winter garments for people. There's just a, an ability to help people at a level that is just really not present in the U.S. anymore. I mean, uh, there's so many things that do so many things for people. So I think it must be very satisfying for people who come here to be part of these organizations. Absolutely. It gives you a, a reason to be here. Yeah. So that's like I would say the number one way you can make friends and start a life. Volunteerism, absolutely. But um, I I was actually quite amazed at how many friends I was able to make in a short period of time after moving here, because uh, we're all in the same boat. We're all freshly here. Yes, and, and, and walking, foreigners walking and foreigners and looking to make new acquaintances. So yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunity to meet people. 
Absolutely. And and unlike, for example, Houston, where you could meet someone and think they were so wonderful and then find out that they lived 42 miles away and they had dogs, which meant that you could spend, by the time they drove to you, you could spend like an hour and 15 minutes before they had to start driving <laughs> back to address their dogs. So, so things are compact. People are oh, well, easily... yeah, you you can you can visit Fred. You can walk to people's homes. Um, yeah, it, and I I have I have made probably 150 friends here since moving here 12 years ago. Which was a much better deal than Buffalo. Well, yeah, I mean, I, normally in the United States, you make your friends in, in high school and college. And sure. You, you keep those friends until you die. <laughs> And you're not really maybe socializing with that many new people. Yes. You have your your core group of friends that you um, spend time with, and so you don't meet that many new people. Yes. Okay. And then the, then the other way I, I I come to feel is is the various kinds of sports and lessons and things. I don't sure know if I'm supposed to keep it a secret, but San Miguel is one of the great tango centers of the world. Oh, yes. have a it's lot only a notch or two below Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. And in fact, people from here regularly go to Buenos Aires to study and compete mm -hmm. and tango. And, and, and then there's the whole golf, tennis, pickleball. Well, pickleball is very popular with um, the older set. Sure. Because I think it's... Um, it's easier than tennis on the dorms and things like that. So it's very popular. Yeah, there's, there's a big group of people that are, And there's also croquet, believe it or not. Oh, yes, which is another. <laughs> it's a it's, it's, San Miguel is also <laughs> another big place. And um, yeah. people sometimes go to the breakers or other places to play. So, it, and again, that's. you. Excuse me. You can play croquet until you're 105 years old. It's not that strenuous. Yeah. So it really, uh, <laughs> really works for an older community. Uh -huh. There. Yeah. I mean, I actually have friends from all different walks of life. Also, church. I have, I'm a church goer, and so we have a group of people that go out for breakfast after Sunday mass every every week. Yes. And so we have English mass. Yes, we have English mass in two places actually. Okay. Uh, San Juan de Dios. Yes. And also, I believe um, the oratorio has a Latin mass. Oh, okay. And then, do we have Latin masses? No, no Latin masses there. I mean, there's some in Salamanca or um, something down there. An actually, hour, hour and a half I don't know if that exists anymore. The Pope has decided he doesn't want Oh, that's right. Mass. So, if, 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 <laughs> that, if that sticks, then, then it will become yeah. a non question. But this is a very Catholic community, and then most Mexicans are, are Catholic. Sure. So, there are a lot of church colors here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what else, what are other ways, you know, um, I mean, there are other kinds of dance lessons. There are also people who meet each other oh, at Spanish there's lessons. there's a pinaco and, and poker players. Oh, and mahjong. Mahjong there's is very popular. There's a fantastic level of mahjong. Oh, yeah. Uh, any, any kind of board game you could, there are groups of people that get together to do that. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, there's a lot of live music here. For many of my friends, it's their favorite thing to do is go out and hear some live music. Well, when I first came here 20 years ago, it was like unraveling a sweater. If you said to somebody, now how did you get here? They would say something like, well, my sister's college roommate and her husband bought a house here. Yeah. And they invited us for Christmas and we liked it so much that we bought a house here. Yeah, no, I actually did not know anyone when I moved here. Well, then, then these <laughs> articles started coming out in People Magazine about best places to retire and Condé Nast and best cities in the world. And and more and more people come here because they've done research. Oh, absolutely. And, like I did. Um, and, well, now that we yes, Condé Nast talks about the best little city in the, in the world. And so, yeah, there are a lot of people coming here that I had never heard of here before. Sure. Based on that, that, that and you and you feel like I mean you would say to anyone anywhere in the U.S. or Canada, if you think you'd like to live here, you'll find a place where you fit. I and... highly recommend people come here and visit and decide if it's the place they'd want to live, and maybe maybe stay for a season. 
Sure. Well, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I have dealt with people who literally fly in on Tuesday night and they want to start looking at houses on Wednesday morning. And I just don't think that's a way to uh, make a decision. I think you need to come here, you need to sit in the park, you need to eat in a few restaurants. Sure. It's about a three and a half or four hour bus ride right. and uh, bus is safe and on time and takes you pretty much where you want to go. Yeah, and the buses are incredibly comfortable. Yes, yes. Better than taking one more. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's true. And and what is it? It's about twenty five dollars to go on ETN, which is Yeah, the... it might even be less than that if you're a senior. Oh, okay, that's right. And if you if you're, I think well, they take fifty percent off the ticket price if you're a senior. Yes. So that's a wonderful uh, yeah. benefit, and then you you got all kinds of savings. And I oh, think, as a senior, you you can get if you visit Mexico City, you can get uh, either half price or free admission most of the museums. Yeah. So Mexico's good, you know, respectful to older people. So what else do you, uh, what else, if somebody is sitting there in Salt Lake City and thinking, you know, I think this might be for me, what would you like them to know? Uh, well, the people here are extremely warm. Much warmer than my experience in the U.S. Just not a criticism, it's just, it's just different. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, family is the most important thing. And that's something that I really uh, admire. And a crime is very When I first moved here, I used to call it Mayberry. Because <laughs> it was so, so tranquil in my neighborhood. Yeah. Friendly neighbors that look after you. It's, there's a lot to be said. There's an awful lot to be said. It's, it's, living here is kind of what I remember living, in, growing up in, as a child in the 50s. Yes. Where, where people, things were different, simpler. Yes. Yeah. That's what I remember, that it's very much like Jennings, Louisiana in 1962. And, uh, you'll see guys walking their kids to school. And uh, my, you know, my favorite story uh, w really was the first time I visited for any length. And I was in a taxi and a, a, a small truck stopped in front of us in order to resupply a small store. And the taxi driver got out to help the guy unload the boxes. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is How really, unusual. I could really spend a couple of hundred years in the United <laughs> States and still not see well, this. It's true. I had a flat tire last week. And I was having a terrible time. I put the jack in the wrong place to jack it up and crack the door frame. And my, my neighbor came out and said, Hey, do you need help? And I said, Yes, thank you. And he came on and, and he jacked the tire up and, and, and put on a new tire. And I, I don't think that would ever happen anywhere else I've ever lived. He would just sure. walk right by you as you're changing sure. your tire. And, and you and Tony have had a, a good bit of interaction with the Mexican medical system. Yes. I, and, and how I've are had you about major that? Surgery. I thought it was, actually, I'm going to be honest, I thought I got superior care than I would have if I'd been in the United States. More, much more nursing care. Uh, there was someone checking on me all the time. I spent a week in uh, the hospital and two days in intensive care after surgery, and I I, I have to say I had excellent care the whole time. I felt really good about it. In my in my one experience when I went under anesthesia, the nurse held my hand Aww. until I was <laughs> gone. Until yeah, I was... they yes, they're very attentive and, and very kind. Um, although they're used to family members staying in the hospital, which yes. is very different. Typically, always have a, an extra bed in the room so that family yes. member can camp out with, the, with their loved one. Uh, and so you're glad you've made the decision to be treated here. Oh, absolutely. I, I uh, think I probably got better here. 
And and among your friends, what's your guess about how many Jews have continued to receive medical treatment in the states, and, and that what percentage? I'd say about ninety percent of them get all the treatment. Today. Oh yeah. Yeah. The only thing that would have me uh, get treatment in the U.S. is uh, I've just recently gotten Medicare. Yes. And uh, that would eliminate me having to pay for <laughs> for my medical sure. care at all. Sure. But then on the other hand. Well, that's that's pretty much what I said in, in my analysis of this, which is if you know people that you'd be delighted to go and spend four or five months with, and they would be delighted to have you for four or five months, then there's a really good argument to be made for choosing Medicare and treatment in the U.S. Right. But if you don't have that, the cost of, of all the a other hotel stuff. hotel room, and, and, and if you need nursing care outside after the surgery. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. So it's going to add to the bill. So I would say that generally I plan on continuing to get most of my medical care here, even with coverage in the United States. It's just easier. Sure. And for just general visits to a doctor, it's very expensive. Typical fee would be like 25 or $30 for an hour of the doctor's time. Yes, yes. And, and a, a couple of the people that I know who have had infusion of one kind or the other, uh, the doctor has come and sat with them for their entire infusion. Uh -huh. And I think that is simply they, unknown in the U.S. It is unknown. And they, they can spend a lot more time with you finding out what, what your needs are. Yes. Uh, you know, in, in the United States, you're always being ushered out of the room with death. Shortly after you arrive. Yes. <laughs> and into the snow if you live yeah. if you live in Buffalo. Yeah, if you live in uh, Buffalo. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. They spend much more time in getting to know you as a patient and you and you need to stay up. Yeah. So what's your, you know, you paint in really a picture of paradise. Mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, what what negative thing do you have to say? What is most irritating to you about living here? Well, um, some of the people I meet are what I call transients. Sure. They're, they're, they're drifters who go from place to place, so you make friends and then, then after three or four years they move on to their next adventure. So that, that, that's kind of sad because you know you meet a lot of wonderful people. And yes. You know, I hate, and, hate to see them go. And then they're... Uh, what are the drawbacks? Um, there's a little more poverty here than there is in the United States, sure. so you, you see more of that. See more of a need. Yeah, actually. some of that is sad. Yeah, some of that is sad. Um, there aren't a lot of drawbacks. I, mean, I have no intention of moving back to the United States. You've adjusted to Mexican time. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, Occasionally, so. people get to things a little later. Like sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's not a. I I, I have one peeve, and that is drivers are pretty terrible. Okay. And this, I point out, is someone from Buffalo, so this this should be considered seriously. Oh my! No, no, the the driver's not so great. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be more aware as a driver. Sure. You can't you can't go into a remote. Think about other things sure, and there's also a lot more <laughs> interaction with motorcycles and regular oh, yes. bicycles. Bicycles and, that and foot traffic and, and people walking out in front of your car. Yeah, sure. You have to be more cautious. And you're happy with the uh, between the the Tuesday market and the grocery stores. You're well, happy with what's available. I would say that things have changed dramatically since when I first moved here. When I first moved here. I, I was a gourmet cook and brought probably 20 cookbooks with me. And I remember opening them up and looking at the ingredient list and crying because I realized I couldn't make most of what was there, what was yes. in there. That's completely changed. I can find anything, any exotic ingredient you can think of, I can find. I just did a Korean uh, feast for a Korean girlfriend and she was amazed at what I was doing that she didn't know was even available here. So, yeah. Entirely here. Hmm? Entirely in San Miguel. Oh, well, some things I ordered online. Okay. Mexico City. 
And, and then we are only 40 miles from Cretro, which has a Home Depot and a yeah. Costco oh, and yeah. a Walmart and a Sam's Club. Yes, they, everything's available that you could imagine. You know, good cuts of meat and spices. And things. But, uh, we're an available time here with our Amazing. Yeah. So in closing, what else? What have you not talked about that you would have liked to have spoken of? Question. The perfect wedding. Is your husband as happy here as you are? Yeah, I think he might be even happier. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, <laughs> you know, my experience, yes. uh, well, my experience is twofold. One is that there are a lot of single women here, mm -hmm. and then there are a lot of, of women who kind of drag their husbands here, but that the reality is the men in general are happier. Uh, than the women. I mean, they. it's easy to play golf. It's easy to play tennis. Yeah. Uh, there are people who do some of the work that was on their honey-do list when right. they lived in the States and so on. My husband loves the whole ambience of Mexico, uh, the relaxed nature of it. I think that's who he is anyway. Yeah. He's it, never been um, a hard-driving person. He's always been a happy and relaxed kind of person, so he's quite happy, yeah, he finds kind of things to do, and plays tennis, and uh, walks around town, talks to people, visits with people, he, he has a great time. So for the couples where they're both independently active, right. there are plenty of choices for either of them, I mean the wife right. can volunteer at Alma while the husband plays golf every right. day. Right, absolutely. And all that is quite inexpensive. Golf fees. Uh, well, less expensive than the United States. Yeah. It costs something to play golf here. Yeah, and I think I forget what happened. Uh, I used to play golf. I, I was the ninth man on an eight man golf team oh. in high school, which I totally loved because I didn't have to play except during flu season. <laughs> so I got to practice every afternoon, but I didn't actually have to go to the tournaments except when, you know, flu would strike. Um, and so I was giving some thought to starting this. And I want to say it was something unbelievable. Like I could have a private lesson with the pro for $10, something like that. Yeah, I mean, the club fees aren't that cheap. I mean, you still have to pay uh, uh, you know, sure. thousands of dollars to be a member of the golf club. Yes, but I mean several thousand, not tens yes, of thousands. Yes, several thousand. And, and there's always someone selling a membership because they know someone if you're looking. I know somebody's selling a yeah. membership right now. And, and what do you think that will, this would be Balanchine? Yeah. And what will they ask? I don't know. I'll have to find out for you. Oh, I saw, I saw a, a notice Cynthia, where Cynthia somebody Cassidy said they're, they're selling for $1,000 below market. And I thought, well, it would really be helpful if you'd share what the market is. Oh, I can find out all that for you. Oh, that would be good. Um, yeah. So, gosh, I think we, you know, paint a full, pretty full picture of you know, your life and how you come to be here and that mm -hmm. uh, the decisions you made were pretty much across the board the right ones. Yeah, I, I have no regrets, certainly. Okay, and, and you know, <laughs> that's nice. You, well, you can see that on your face. Oh, I no, think. I love it here. It's... I, 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 the mere thought of moving is very unattractive. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's how I feel, I think. I, um... I uh... I'm, I'm just so delighted with so much. So in closing, is there anything else you want to say? All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Yeah, and um, uh, and it's so great. And later there's a, a video where we'll see you dead, where oh, you're, yeah. you're dressed up for the Day of the Dead. And I'm sure My favorite holiday. I'm sure viewers will enjoy that. <laughs> and that's another thing. Like you, you, um, you know, e eagerly participate in that. You have friends who eagerly participate oh, yes. in that. And that is not something you did in Buffalo. Oh no, we didn't celebrate Day of the Dead at all. Uh, Buffalo doesn't really have a, a very uh, big Hispanic. So did you do like did you do costumes for Halloween? Of course. Okay, but, <laughs> but but not for Mardi Gras. I used to do costumes. I, I worked. Um, I volunteered at a, a local theater, and we had a costume show. Ah. Where we would all get dressed up in the costumes from the past theater productions. Sometimes famous people wore them. Oh, I like it. Oh yeah. All right, so all, all of you out there who are.
<laughs> have, uh, have makeup and dream of using it regularly. This is clearly our spot. So anyway, thank you so much. You're it's welcome. delightful to be with you, delightful to know you, and I'm so happy that all this has been such a great gift for you and your husband. Yes, thank you. All right, terrific. Thank you.